Good evening. Good evening. Prior to council meeting tonight, we will be having an appeal of the Pine Bluff Planning Commission's denial of rezoning property located at 3800 Oakwood Road from R1 to B3 commercial. I'm not sure how many people are here uh, speaking for that uh, matter and how many are here are speaking against. But we'll, we'll probably limit it to four people on each side. And we're going to ask that you speak two minutes. So those that are in favor of the rezoning, please speak. If you would, please state your name. And I'm Sam Ware. I'm a preferred developer for Dollar General Stores. I represent North Mississippi, West Tennessee, and Eastern Arkansas, but I'd like to give y'all a traffic count in that area. Yes. This is from Arkansas and the Department of Transportation. This one as well. Yes, sir. Ms. George, who's the planning commissioner for that area, her opposition was the traffic. If you'll look at where it says Pine Bluff, at the bottom of the page, look over to the left, you'll see Highway 54 and Highway 79 where it intersects. It. There's 11,000 cars a day at Highway 79 and 54 intersection. As you go down Sulphur Springs Road, I guess that would be west, you have 6,800, you have 4,600, you have 1,800 cars a day. If you go across 530, though, on Highway 79, it starts picking up at 15,000, 17,000, on up in that area there. I'm here to say tonight that a dollar general store will not add or decrease your traffic. This is a history of your traffic right here that the Arkansas Department of Transportation has set in this area. There's only two times a day that I can see that the school would be going and coming and letting out, and the parents would be picking them up. Most of the time, I've built stores in all over, West Tennessee and, and Mississippi, North Mississippi and Memphis, that I've had rezonings in school areas, and we never have had a problem with the traffic. And Memphis has got, Memphis school that I built on East Range Road and Kirby Parkway is twice the size of school out here. And, uh, but I just wanted to let you know that this is not going to increase or decrease this traffic. It will bring jobs to this area and sales tax dollars to the city of Pine Bluff. And I'm here to also to say, tell you, and I'm almost through, Whitehall is getting a new store. It's been approved. I have been looking at University Avenue to build a new store here for Dollar General and this store here. They sent me here to look for an area here in the town. That's what I do. And I build them and lease them back to them. They run them. If any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Are there questions of Mr. Ware? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, tra the traffic that you were uh, speaking of, you're saying that Highway 54, that, is that what you call Suffer Springs? Yes, sir. Suffer that's Highway 54, Suffer okay. Springs Road. Yes, sir. Okay. And did you notice the traffic that was coming up from Oakwood? Oakwood is, is you got 6,800 cars and 11,000 cars there a day. And that's including that whole area right there. That's what they, that's what they do. That's what the Arkansas Department of Transportation does. So you're saying that it's not gonna be a traffic hazard for you by having your store in that corner? No, sir. And I don't think it's gonna be a traffic hazard to anyone that's driving that road because of the fact your shoppers are actually these people that's driving the road in this area every day. They're going to be using that store. I've got kids that come out of the high school there in Memphis that goes into the Dollar General store and shops, and their parents pick them up there. Today I was over there at the, at the empty barbecue place there. There's nine kids sitting there waiting for the parents to pick them up. And, there's no, and, there, and I don't know how they're picking them up if it's raining out there. That's what I'm saying. This is a, this is, Dollar General is a neighborhood store. They don't sell beer. They do not sell uh, tobacco. And it's a neighborhood store. And that's what uh, 
I think it would add to this area because you've got a lot of rooftops there. A lot of people would not want to go across 79 and 530 to get back up in that area if they could buy something right there. And, that's, and you did make, a, make mention that you were looking out on university somewhere also for one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I am. And Whitehall has been approved. Well, I've already met with the mayor there. We're going to build it on Highway 270. That's their second store, Whitehall is. Any other questions of Mr. Ware? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mayor, members of the city council. Please state your name, sir. My name is David Hoffman. I am the, I guess if there's such a term, nephew-in-law of the actual owner of 3800 Oakwood, John Paul Weiner. I've been handling Mr. Weiner's affairs since he's become uh, disabled and now resides in the nursing home at Whitehall. Uh, Mr. Weiner is going to be there permanently, and the need to sell the house is twofold. First is he's no longer able to live there, so the house is going to be vacant. And the second is, is that it's not cheap to have someone residing, someone residing in a nursing home, and that's what we face right now. If this zoning is not approved, we've had this house in the market for two years almost. We have not had one offer on the house until the Dollar General people began to look at it in nearly two years. If this fails tonight, then it has to remain in a residential zoning class, and that means it probably will not sell for quite some time to come. The commercial area has come to this property. <coughs> it's commercial across Oakwood. It's, there's a church right beside it, which churches can exist in any of your zoning classifications as I understand it. But still, that's not a residence. There is multifamily housing just down the street. Two schools across. Commercial all the way across 79. This has become commercial property. And that t it's best signaled to me by the fact that no one has even made even, even an insulting offer on the property in, in two years. So if we can't sell it as commercial property, that means that we have to hold on to it. And because of that, that means that a denial of the zoning change is in effect going to condemn my property or the property of my, my wife's uncle. It's not going to sell as, as residential property. I feel certain as nice a house as it is and as good a location as it is, if it were to sell as a residential property, we would have already had people clamoring for it. But people recognize what's gone on with the, with the community, with the area, and realize that it's become commercial. Now, your zoning ordinance, as I looked it up last night, has a term for properties such as this, where you have one type of usage and another type kind of creeps up to overtake it. And I'm sorry, I wish I could remember the term, but your own zoning ordinance recognizes that this kind of event takes place. The characteristic of neighborhoods change, and that's exactly what's happened here. When that house was built in 1956, and I believe Mr. Weiner's owned it since the 70s, that was mostly residential. But that's not the case any longer. So again, to approve this ordinance, or to, to approve this rezoning, will prevent a vacant house from being continued in Pine Bluff. And it will also prevent, a house, in fact, a property from being condemned. Questions, please. Any questions of Mr. Hoffman? Thank you, sir. <coughs> Are there any others here to speak in favor of rezoning the property? Okay. If not, individuals that are opposed to rezoning the property. Yes, ma'am. 
Well, one at a time. I'm Janice Kimbrell. I'm sorry? Janice Kimbrell. Kim okay, just put, pull the mic down. Thank you. Janice. Kim yes. Kimbrell. Kimbrell. Oh, okay, thank you. I live right next door to this property. Mm -hmm. If they would come down on the price, they could sell it. And the, he hasn't been through there in all of this traffic. I'm telling you, I can't get out of my driveway. And if a dollar store is put there, think of the trash that's going to go everywhere. <coughs> I am against it and hope it don't go through. Is that it, ma'am? That's it. Are there any questions of Mrs. Kimbrell? Didn't you bring a Excuse me, Ms. Kimbrell? Ms. Kimbrell, didn't, didn't you bring some... Just to the mic. <clears throat> you you turned in some petitions. Signed, how many people were on those petitions that signed Two, against it? 238. They live in that area? They live, they go through that intersection every day. Then I brought some more behind this... Uh, property on Oakwood Road that they're talking about. There is a church. It used to be Salem Missionary Baptist, and now it's what's it? Living Word Baptist Church. Baptist Church, and they brought some signatures today to add to. But uh, we don't need this. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Danny Holcomb. I'm president of the Washington Chapel School Board. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to come and speak today. Uh, don't have any maps, any, any traffic counts, but I drive that road on a daily basis. I've been driving that road for the last 40 years of my life, and I've seen a tremendous amount of traffic increase. Uh, I have several things that concern me about the issue if it is passed. First thing that I that concerns me is the effect it'll have on family businesses that operate just past where they're wanting to put this uh, this uh, store in. I also have a concern about the traffic flow because, like I said, I drive that road every day, and I see the traffic jams of people trying to exit uh, two parking lots, people trying to enter on Oakwood Road, people trying to come off Highway 79, and people trying to come up Supper Springs Road. And I can tell you. It's a total nightmare now, and it'll only get worse if we try to, to uh, implement something like this. And the last thing and the most important thing to me that we have to consider is child safety. They talked about those apartments that are on, on that street. Those children are walking to school every day, and something like this will only cause more hazard for the children of the Watching Chapel School District. And I please hope that you'll consider those things when, uh, when this is brought to a vote. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Are there any questions of Mr. Holcomb? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Danny Hazelwood. I'm superintendent of schools at Washington Chapel. I want to speak against this proposal or this. Um, I've uh, been superintendent at Washington Chapel for five years. I can tell you for the la every year that I've been here, I've had parents call me about that intersection. They're highly concerned about kids crossing the street there, walking to or from school. It's an extremely dangerous <coughs> intersection right now. now I've heard uh, talks and rumors of maybe someday Silver Springs being widening out to a four lane or something along that line. And I think at that point, possibly it would be a better fit. But until that happens, until there can be some type of um, traffic light or something along that line, I'm concerned for the 3,000 kids that I'm responsible for. And I don't know what to tell a parent when they call me and say, they almost saw one get hit. So I'm, 
I'm against this, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I, I know it's a, a, track, a tax structure that'd be good for our community, but I just don't know that we're ready for it right now. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mostly, uh, everybody that's against it mm -hmm. is basically talking about traffic. Right. And I am from that area, and I went to school over there. So I definitely know all about the traffic. Yes, and when I was going to school over there, then Oakwood Road was the pr pr primary uh, road to come up from, uh, from, from the north. Right. Way, back home in school, they used Oakwood to come up. And now it's a secondary road because we have 530. Uh, but during the time that it was primary road, there was a restaurant right on the corner. Right. For years and years and years, and even it went out of business, and and the Hogwire restaurant came, and nobody complained about traffic. Right. And I'm just here to tell you for sure that I, I am for businesses in Pine Bluff, sure, yeah. and I'm looking at the reasons why that all of a sudden that there's a traffic problem with this this particular corner when it well, never was before. I wish I could tell you it's because we've grown. I can't necessarily tell you that. I can tell you that when Hog Wild was there, they were only open in, usually in the evenings and at night. But rare, I mean, I don't know if they were open the first thing in the mornings, 7.30, 8.30, when, when the uh, traffic flow was so high. So it really wasn't an issue for Hog Wild. Now, I can't speak for the restaurant before that. Yeah, and, and that was the parking lot where the students from the high school parked there and ate and mm -hmm. run the music up loud. Right. And nobody complained about it at that time. But well, but it, it, I've been in that area forever. I go to football games, I go to basketball games. I almost had a wreck there coming off 7-9 one time when I was going, you know. So I know about the traffic. But it was a primary, it was a primary road at that time. Now it's secondary. And uh, I, I just don't like it. And then uh, the president from uh, the dollar store, and, and I like the fact that he's looking all over Pine Bluff, sure. Arkansas, to put some stores. I, I believe in employment. I believe in uh, uh, the tax, the taxes that they're going to pay to pay Pine Bluff. Mm -hmm. and, and I also believe in safety. Sure. But we have to look at something that, that, that sometimes we have, to, we have to deal with traffic. You know, I think it's the traffic jam out by Walmart. Everybody wants to be out there. So sometimes we have to look at traffic, and I don't know. Well, I, you know, all I can speak for is the... 38 or 48 buses that we run. I don't know how many actually come down Oakwood, but we have s several buses that come down Oakwood. It may be a secondary uh, road, but two times during the day, it's a primary road for us. And speaking of that two times, the dollar store probably open at 9, and you're talking about 7.30 to 8.30, where mm -hmm. they're not going to probably even be open. Yeah. And then you're probably going to have a traffic, maybe a traffic jam between 2 and 8.30. <clears throat> but other than that, I mean, that, that's not my vote yet. I'm just, those are the things that saying. I'm saying. Sure. And, uh, well, I can tell you, with all honesty, I have mixed emotions. I, I, I want Pine Bluff to grow. Yeah, we you know, need to grow. I, I live here, too, and I understand the importance of it. But my first priority is who pays me. And, and I, I have to look out for those kids, those little children. That were, if we didn't have volunteers out there right now, would be fending for themselves crossing that street. It's, it's a tough situation. I just never knew where those people were when Hogwild and other restaurants were. Right. I never but we just got volunteers this year, and these are unpaid volunteers that step out there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, That's uh, all uh, Mr. Hayeswood, I yes. have one question. You yes, were speaking of a traffic light. If it was a traffic light there, what it would be? Well, I can't guarantee you that. I, I know that that would, could regulate some of the traffic. That might keep us from having to ask for volunteers to or for someone to step out in the middle of that traffic. Uh, I know, I, 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 mean, I didn't see the numbers, but I know that the traffic during certain times of day is very high, but there's other times of the day that it's not very high. Um, after a ball game, it would be great to have that. Uh, before, in the morning and after school, it'd be great to have that. But uh, I know there's uh, some uh, hoops that you have to jump through for traffic. Uh, we've talked about it with the uh, transportation people before. So it's not easy to get a traffic light. Any other questions of Mr. Hazelwood? 
Thank you, sir. I'd just like to insert yeah. that the reason it's so difficult is because you have to deal with the state highway. It's the state highway? Yeah, it's not us. You know, we can walk out there and pull one up, but we, they wouldn't. They won't. Maxine Nelson. I would just like to add to this as a member of the Watson Chapel School Board and a resident of Watson Chapel School District. Uh, I I agree with the others. I don't know where this traffic come, come from. Mr. Brown saying it's secondary road, but when I'm traveling, taking my grandkids to and from school, and it's a it's a primary road, and there are numerous. There are like 12 school buses that's over there at LL Owen, which is an elementary school, you know, picking up students. We have an after school program at LL Owen. So again, as Mr. Hazelwood and others have said, we are thinking about the safety of our students. And at the current time, we just don't feel that a business at that particular area would be conducive to the safety of our students. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's Oakwood, two. You have two minutes, sir. Oakwood Drive is a right turn only, uh, going out on Highway or Suffolk Springs Road, Highway 54. It's a right turn only. It's school time. Yes, sir, it's a sign right there. That's school time. It's, it's school time it is, a right turn on because it's a sign right there. We have no problem with that. I can. I don't even have to have a drive out on Highway 54. I would come in off and in, a, in and out on Oakwood Drive. I don't have any problem. The, the Donald General does not have any problem with that right turn on. Because I put a sign, I, I took a picture of it and, and gave it to him in the park. So your traffic is not going left out of Oakwood Drive during the school time. It's going right. And I've been out there, and what they've been doing is going down the street and turning around and coming back, which is illegal. should be illegal by the police force in, in Pine Bluff. Because y'all put that up there. That's, what I, I, that's all I want to point out, because it's not a left and right there during school time. It's a right turn. All right, thank you. No, no, excuse me. Excuse me. We, they, they didn't have four, and we've had four to speak, so we're going to bring it to I a close. I about the right turn on. It might be a sign there, but it is not obeyed. That's true. That's why we have volunteers directing the traffic. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. Sir, we've had speakers on both sides to speak. No, that's, we, we have. I'll give right away to the highway department. Well, you have to speak. You have to speak with the highway department about that. See, we, we, can't, we can't really address that today. If that helps the decision-making process, I will give the right way to the highway department. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions of anyone? If not, if any other questions, we'll bring this public hearing to a close, and we will vote. Show of hands of the ones that is for it and, and not. Yeah. Well, yes. Okay. All right. If individuals that are for, well, let me say this individuals that are against uh, denying the rezoning of the property, let it be known by saying, show, show of hands, please. Okay. Yes. Yes. Denial. Yeah, denial of the rezoning of the property. Yeah. Those are the ones that raising their hands. You those are the right ones, yeah. <laughs> That's the ones that support the rest. Okay, excuse me. You you right. You got to be All right. <laughs> We're here to deal. Let's try that again. Let, let, let me let me try this again. Those are in in favor of denial of the rezoning. Don't want it. <laughs> Don't want it. Yeah. All right. Those are in favor. Okay. All right. Does that help you, ma'am? All right. Thank you. Okay. 
there's no other business, we'll bring this now, public. What I'm saying is that so. since we don't have a motion on the uh, on the floor, then we we're not uh, we don't have a motion to overturn the uh, commissions. Well, I'd like to make a motion to uphold the planning commission's decision, and that's denial. All right, it's been moved and properly seconded that the Planning Commission's decision of denial of the rezoning be upheld. And we have a second. Is there any other dis discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to deny, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? Present. Okay. The motion carries 7-1. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get the uh, public comments taken. First on the agenda is a, is a gentleman by the name of Samuel Washington. Samuel Washington. Yes, sir. You can speak to that, sir. You have two minutes. It's, uh, Samuel Washington. Uh, I just brought information concerning the demolition uh, not demolition, but uh, would you say condemnation of the property on 3607 West Shore Second? Yes, sir. But I have here in my possession a contract for dem demolition dated for December 29th. It should have been demolished by now, but it hasn't. Uh, Mr. Knotts, one of your city licensed contractor, called me this afternoon. He said he's going to make sure to get on that this week or next week. Okay, so uh, it should have been it should have been should demolished. have been done, but he, the contractor hadn't gotten to it yet. That is correct. Yes. Uh, at one point, we were waiting on the ground to dry out, so it's heavy equipment wouldn't damage any underground prop, uh, utility lines, sewer lines, water lines, things of that nature. When, when is he planning on doing it, sir? He told me he would try to get that permit today, uh, today or tomorrow, to get it started. Okay, he hadn't received the permit. No, he hadn't. He hadn't got the permit yet. Oh, I, but, uh, I thought you said he had the permit back in December. We signed an agreement. Oh, you signed an agreement okay. for him to tear down at a certain price to demolish the property. Okay. And uh, but we were waiting on the weather to the ground to dry out. Uh, I guess he forgot about it. All right. He well, did call me this afternoon and said he was going to get on it. I'm not sure. You haven't appeared before this body before, have you, sir? Uh, no. 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 Okay. I okay. drove here from Monroe, Louisiana. I don't live Okay. Here, so, uh, All right. Uh, I'm going to ask you to work with Miss Mrs. Uh, Mitzi Ruth, she's a housing, uh, chief housing inspector. Uh, Mrs. Stubbs, Miss Ruth, is that on, no, Miss Ruth? Is it on the list? Is it on the list tonight? What was the address again, sir? 3607 West Short Second. Could you come up to the mic, Miss Ruth? I don't see it on the list. Is the only reason I was asking. This is it here. Did you receive a letter, sir? <laughs> okay. Okay, if you would just get with Miss Ruth, she'll help you with that. It will... Yes, it is. I'm sorry. I oh, see it. okay. Page four, number nine. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Next on the list is Jesse Turner. Reverend Turner. Okay. I'm Mayor and uh, Council. I'm here to speak on uh, item four on your agenda. Uh, I would encourage additional dialogue in the Public Safety Committee regarding this piece of legislation. Uh, number one, uh, do you have an estimated cost associated with the consultant? Number two, we recommend to this council to disband the Review Committee and reestablish the Civil Service Commission to give public safety personnel an opportunity to be heard by an independent body. Will the consultant's recommendations 
be that of developing discipline, policy, and procedures for all public safety uh, individuals. Uh, will the uh, revisions or the uh, policies and procedures that are already in place, will that be revised with a consultant? And lastly, what discipline policies and procedures are in place at this time and are they administered fairly? Mainly, we would encourage this city council to revisit reestablishing the public safety committee to, to bring forth the civil service commission and disband the review panel made up of citizens. So that's, that's my uh, comment to continue dialogue on this uh, consultant before you act on it. Thanks, sir. Okay. I think that's it with the public agenda. <clears throat> I call to order the Pine Bluff City Council meeting of Tuesday, February 21st, 2012. Okay. May we have a roll call, please, Mrs. Whitfield? Autowoman Holcomb? Here. Autowoman Brahman? Here. Autowoman Easterly? Here. Autowoman Stamp? Here. Autowoman Walker? Present. Autowoman Boyd? Here. Autowoman Brown? Here. Autowoman May? Here. Okay, each of you have a copy of the minutes. So moved. From February 6th as well as February 13th, special call meeting. Second. I have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor of the, approving the minutes of, of the February 6th and February 13th special call meeting, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All right. The motion carries 8-0. Okay, uh, we'll start with committee reports. Ms. Holcomb? Ordinance and resolutions. Please. Ordinance and resolution met prior to the meeting, and we're going to complete all the items except number five, and it will be tabled. And that's all I have for ordinances and resolutions. Okay. Uh, Ways and means, Mr. Brummett. Yes, Mayor. The Ways and means committee met prior to the meeting, and we have three budget adjustments that were in your packet. I'd like for you to look at those, please. The first one is for, uh, it says reason required is for the 2011 year-end budget adjustment. This is from the finance department. As I understand this, uh, at the end of the year, every year, each uh, department has to have a balanced budget. So what they have to do is uh, take money basically from one account where they didn't Please utilize it. And, to cover maybe an expense that was overran a little bit. So that's what the purpose of this is, and I'd move that we accept this budget adjustment. Second. It's been moved and probably second that a budget adjustment to balance the 2012 budget with the carryover grant budgets from 2011 uh, for all departments be approved. <coughs> is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the adjustment as presented uh, for the carryover grant budget, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposes? The motion carries 8-0. The second one is for also from the Finance Department for the 2012 carryover budget adjustment. These are all grant funds, grants that the city has been, uh, has received, and maybe they didn't quite spend all the money and basically this is to allow them to carry forward those monies to be able to use them in 2012. So I move we accept this 2012 carryover budget adjustment. Second. It's been moved and properly second that the carryover grant budget from 2011 to 2012 be approved as presented. Is there any discussion? Um, you this is a carryover budget, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh -huh. Carryover grant budget. Um, what department did this come from? Or is it overall? It's overall finance. It comes out of finance, but it comes overall. Okay. Um, 
am I correct in that the Brownsville grant has its revenue has a deficit of $195,430? No, I don't think it has a deficit, ma'am. On the front page. Mr. Miller. Ms. Walker, on the front page, those are the revenue accounts for the Brownsville grant, and then on the second page, the expense accounts are shown you know, the opposite sign. There's a significant amount of money that's carrying over that's not yet been spent on that grant, and that's reflected in those balances there. Okay, so you're, you're saying what now? The deficit uh, is what? Well, there's a hunt, you know, on the second page, there on the uh, grant hazardous expense, there's 167.85. And on uh, the uh, grant petroleum expense, 125480. So a total budget of about 100 and, uh, 286,000 will be carried over in the next year. And you know the, the accounts on the front page are the revenue accounts that are associated with those expense. Okay, so you're saying the revenue in the air part is uh, a deficit of 195,000. Uh, well, I said the expense piece was a. Uh, a budget carryover of 286,000. The revenue piece is a, uh, let's see, a carryover of about, it looks like 340,000. So it's a little more. I guess it's not been drawn down on the revenue. Now, and I'm still saying, are you saying that it is short or is not? It's not that it's short, it's just there's a lot of grant money that's not been expended on, on that. See, this yeah. is a carry forward. So it carries forward the budget so the grant monies then can be expended in 2012. Right. Okay, can you, know, can you tell me why it was not spent? No. Well, uh, he probably can't tell you, but Mr. Sampson, is he it? Yes, sir. Uh, those projects are uh, based on um, doing assessments for buildings in the eligible areas. So the uh, consultant uh, is underway with doing their uh, assessments for the different parts of the city where they're eligible to utilize the dollars. So um, they're in their phase of being processed now, but they are not completed with those particular assessments, primarily uh, the downtown area and the University Park area are the two that they're concentrating on right now. And so the uh, work is done in phases, then it goes through the state for them to approve that phase and the next phase then comes back and then the, at that point then the consultant can make a request for payment after the completion of the assessment. Okay. So most of these adjustments comes from community development, right? I'm not, I, no ma'am, I don't think so. These are all in the general fund, Ms. Walker. It just happens that community development is involved in managing these grounds and building programs. Okay. There are any others? Uh, I think we had to do this in the fall for community development on the ABC grant on the first page, the 20,778. Primarily, the Brownsville grant, I believe, is the only one on this uh, budget adjustment that can be involved, involved in. All these accounts are in the general fund. Okay. Do we ha have a time frame where this money is to be spent, Mr. Sam? Uh, there's the schedule. Or uh, July of this year should be the majority of it should be expended. Okay, and if it's not, what happens with it? Then it should be. If it's not, then we'll just have to spend it by. I mean, we have the, the rest of the year, but I'm just saying we. The plan is to expend it by uh, July of this year. And and if it's not spent by the end of this year, then we can request uh, extension. We re request an extension. But in the meantime, if it's not spent, the way they are doing cuts, we could lose that as well, right? Well, we, we don't know exactly how that would run. We, the plan is to try to get it expended so we don't have to deal with that. So 
that's that's the best way to approach it. Just try to just go ahead and get get the projects uh, completed. Okay, well, I would hope that we would not uh, lose any more money. Uh, you know, if you, if you need some help in getting it done, you know, I think that's what you need to do is uh, get whatever agency it needs uh, to assist you or whatever department because Pine Bluff does not have any money anymore to go back to the government. Mm -hmm. We need all we can get and some more. All right. Thank you for your recommendation. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Just so I understand it for sure, Usually when I do accounting, minuses or expenses and pluses or income. But the way this looks like it's working is that the ones that have parentheses around them are actually income. Right. And the other ones are, so you you got 348 roughly in uh, revenue that's still not spent. You spent like 285, so you got like 63,000 at Brownfield left. Is that correct? Something along that, like that? Um. Well, I, the way I read it is that we've expended um, money that we've we've not drawn. Um, there's a budgeted revenue of 348 to carry over, but the less budgeted expense 285. So there's some money that we've already expended that we've not drawn and got the revenue in on. Uh, the numbers when they started out there were equal, uh, but yeah, okay. can't. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Hearing no other questions, all in favor of the adjustment, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? The motion carries 8 0. No, I oppose. 7 1. Okay. okay. We have one other budget adjustment. Uh, as I understand this one, it's the grant carryover budget for community development. It's unspent monies in the community development department. It's like three pages. I move we accept this budget just yep. from second. It's been moved and probably second that the uh, budget adjustment carry over grant budget. Yes. Is that the, yeah, the carry over grant budget from 2011 to 2012 uh, for the community development department to be approved. Was open for questions. Mr. Berman, I respectively uh, ask you know, which you would draw this and send it back to committee, please. Uh, this hasn't gone through the Community Development Committee? No, it has not. Will it hurt the budget process if we let this go back to the committee? Well, what this budget adjustment does, um, and, and, and unlike in previous years, you know, in previous years there were funds moved from one project to another within this budget adjustment, and this time what we are attempting to do is just get the carryover budget done. So basically, it takes the budget as it was approved and appropriated by the council in 2011, the unspent portion of that budget. <clears throat> and carries it over into 2012 so it can be spent. We do run into problems, you know, in paying bills or we don't have enough budget, and uh, it, it, it does cause some hindrances when we don't have the carryover done. Uh, so, so we're just in an attempt to streamline things. We did not do any of the moving around between projects that we've done in the past, and we're, if, there's, if that needs to be done, then separate budget adjustments will be brought during the, the year at the time that needs to be done for the council to consider. We're just carrying over the budget that council already approved in 2011 that was not yet spent into 2012 on those projects. Would it be proper if I made a motion to send this to committee? It is a lot of money in here. I mean, I mean just review it. But that has nothing to do with the money. You know, these are all part of their budget. You know. It's up to y'all. You can proceed. I would draw my request if you think on my table. I would ask that your committee do review this. If there's anything, if you find any discrepancies, please bring it to the attention of the council. Is there a motion and second? Yes. It's been moved and probably second. That the carrier of a grant budget for the Community Development Department be approved as presented. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? No. Uh, the 
The motion carries 7 1. Uh, Mr. Sampson, the request was presented to the committee. Present this to the committee in case there is any concerns that they might have or they, that, that it can be raised there or they can discuss it with you. All right. And, and Mr. Miller, I'll ask that you be at that community development meeting as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we also have at your desk, you have a copy of the 5 8 cent tax revenue so far and uh, to me it's kind of pleasing to see that it's not that far out of line with what the projections were you also have a copy of the financial statement for January 31 2012 for the city I ask you all to review that that concludes my report sir all right thank you sir bills at city be paid okay <laughs> <laughs> I move we pay the bills that the city owes second Moved and probably second that the bills of the city be paid. Okay. All in favor of that motion, let me know by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you. The, the motion carries 8 0. Uh, before we go into the other department head, uh, we have a young man here in our presence tonight that we like to present a proclamation to, and unfortunately, the uh, individual that's with him has, to, uh, has another engagement. But uh, the young man is Mr. Xavier Westmoreland. Mr. Westmoreland, would you please come up? Mr. Westmoreland was chosen to be the battalion command of the Watson Chapel Jr. ROTC program for the senior year 2011 through 2012. And I'm sure most of you have seen the fact that he was, uh, honor was bestowed upon him with the Legion of Valor Bronze Cross for achievement. And I'd like to present to him this proclamation on behalf of the citizens of Fine Bluff. All right. <laughs> going into uh, economic and community development. Mrs. Walker. Big pardon. Economic and community development. Uh, no report, Mayor. <laughs> all right. Uh, public health and welfare, Alderman Mays. We have a meeting, Mayor, but 
I just want to encourage the citizens of Pine Bluff to call the street department and get on the ditch cleanup list. A lot of them been calling already. They had the ditches cleaned out before the rainy season started. Clogging up. I just want you to know that 543 5101. Thank you, sir. Okay, Public Works, Alderman Boyd. <laughs> yes, sir, Mayor. Uh, Public Works, we met on February 10th uh, concerning item number three on the yes, agenda. Sir. And the committee voted for two pass and we brought it to the full council for approval. Yes, sir. And also, while we have in our committee report, we have a couple of speakers. Mr. Matthew is going to update us on the work at, Mer at the Merrill Building in Chester Hyman. And also, we have a young man, Rodney Holcomb. Junior. Wake up, Rodney. Junior. Okay. <laughs> he want to come and share a thought with us. Come, young man. And then Mr. Matthew will come and give us an update. And he is the grandson of? Ottoman? Ottoman? This is Irene Hope. Irene Hope. That's right. Yes, sir. Good afternoon to the, to Mr. Mayor Carl Regis Jr., to the City Council of Pine Bluff and the citizens of Pine Bluff. I'm a student at Southeast Middle School. I'm 12 years old, born May 18, 1999. And I'm here today to stand before you and talk about Chester Hines Community Center. I've been going there since 2005. This will be my seventh year. And I will tell you that I appreciate for what, for what you're doing to the building right now in the, in the rebuilding and giving it better conditions. And furthermore, I would like to add that um, when I was going there first, it, we didn't have the best conditions in town, but now, but now the city council had come together to make it better for yes, the uh, kids of Pine Bluff School, of Pine Bluff, and I would like to thank you for that. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Young Mr. Hogan, we appreciate yeah. those words. That's a hard act to follow, Mr. Matthews. follow that, Mr. Matthews. You can hey. follow that. Uh, Just show pictures. That's all. Bring it back to you. Uh, if it's all right with you, Alderman Holcomb, can we get him here every time? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm so glad to come behind him to give you an update on where we are with the Chester Hines and Merle Center. Uh, there's no progress been made on Merle because we're working on Chester Hines. Last week, uh, with the help of the parks employees as well as the uh, Department of Correction, we were successful in changing the lights out, brand new lights in the gymnasium floor. We were successful in putting up the new paneling around the installation. If any of you all have been over, it was a, kind of an eyesore. We were successful with getting all of that put up. We also discovered that we had gas leaks throughout the whole building. We have remedied all of the gas leaks. There was at least 14 we found. So we have eliminated all of the gas leaks. We have also uh, rewired the fans and the lights where they operate from the gym, not from the pound box and from different areas of the building. Uh, we successfully cleaned all the walls, the venting. The gym looked like a new place. Uh, we're in the process now. We have ordered doors, the security doors around the gymnasium as well as a couple of the exterior doors. As soon as they arrive, they will be installed. The bids are currently going out for bid for the painting of the entire facility, as well as a replacing of all the defective ceiling tiles, the painting of the tile grids. So we will do those in, in, in increments when the kids are not around. The first increment will go during the spring break, as I reported before. We still anticipate, and we may finish ahead of schedule with the 90 days. Everything, the cooperation has been great. And we're proceeding forward, and we'll have this project done, and we'll move forward over to the Merle Center. All right. Okay. I'd like to say something. I'd like to actually thank you all for what you've done because uh, I've been cracking the whip yes, about this particular project. Yes. But uh, you should give honor to whom honor is due and tribute to whom tribute is due. So you all have gotten started, and that is that's great. And uh, Rodney. Uh, keeps close check on Chester Hines every week and yeah. read the paper and, and he loves that place and I you know so it's gonna be a 
nicer place for all of our children. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Matthews, have bids for the uh, gymnasium flooring been secured yet? No, no. Uh, we we kind of playing it by ear to see what kind of monies we're going to bid close to the end. So we will have that in before the 90-day period. The bids, yes. yes. And, uh, just give council fair notice is that we, we probably will need additional dollars to put a floor in there that would be uh, a very good floor and a, and a floor with some longevity as opposed to the one we've done. So we'll look forward to that. Yes, Matthew, thank you. And now we thank the parks department staff as well. Can I say this too? Yes, sir. Member of the Public Works Committee. I want to say thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You got another vote, boy. <laughs> All right. Development and planning. Mr. Steps, please. Yes, sir, uh, Mayor. We we had a meeting, and that several uh, pictures came before uh, to request additional time, and so we they did go ahead and get some permits. Okay. Is it, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Brown, uh, Traffic and Aviation. No report, Mr. Mayor, but uh, Ken Johnson is here, and he can give us a brief report on the uh, project that's going on or the completion of the project that we have at the airport. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and members Good of the evening. Council. Good evening. I serve as a commissioner on the local airport uh, yes. board. Just to kind of give you an update, we're about 20% uh, toward completion of the project. Uh, we are on schedule and um, should be completed hopefully about June. We were looking at, of course, completing it by, by May in time for the flying. But I, did, I, I want to say a special thanks and appreciation to each of you for council members for supporting this endeavor. I know we had a little trouble getting started initially, but of course we, we're moving uh, ahead. As you know, the airport is the center of commerce for the city of Pine Bluff. So again, who knows toward the future when we look at terminal building, we will have the funding available toward these buildings. But again, hats off to you. We really appreciate you for your support and for your financial backing toward this project, and it will be completed uh, on time. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right. <coughs> okay, administration, Alderman Easterly. I don't have a board, Mayor, but I, 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 I stepped out to ask uh, Steve to have check in. We need to get somebody to come in and with systems system. or some IT person or something to <laughs> fix yeah, this and, you know, to stop it because I mean we've tried yeah. everything else and I asked him I just let him know that I asked him to, okay. so we may call I, mean, I don't know what it'll be but it'll come out of our maintenance bill but we need to get this uh, okay. All right. We'll follow up with that. Thank you. Mrs. Oakham, Public Safety. Uh, I have no report, but someone called me about a PowerPoint presentation. Somebody, somebody, well, apparently it's not going to happen. Okay. I was called about a PowerPoint presentation. Do you recall who? <laughs> called from the mayor's office. PowerPoint president. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Wait a minute. I have a question. Uh, being chairman of public safety, I'm all, all, always asked some questions. And the question that has been asked is, if, are we going to get an assistant fire chief? Yes. We will. And then the next question will be when? Uh, that process hadn't taken place yet. The new chief is getting his legs together, and as soon as things get situated, they'll be open to applicants, and you know, we hope to have it done. I would say anywhere from 30 to 120 days. 30 to 120 days. Puts us in the June time frame, yes. And then the next question, what will the process be? Uh, that hadn't been defined yet. Okay. So as we do, we'll, we'll let you know. All right. Thank you. That lies with the chief, doesn't it? It does. I'm sure it does, but the question was asked. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm, just what, what, but it does. I, I'm only asking the question that was asked of me. Okay. And they want to know when, how, wh what, and all that. Either I, we know who, who's supposed to do it, but they want to know what the process would be. Yes. Okay. He doesn't technically necessarily have to have one if he doesn't want one. Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's his call. Yeah. I mean, that's his, it's his prerogative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I'm just that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
and all that's true, but then people want to know. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> okay, propose ordinances and resolutions. <clears throat> okay. Have an ordinance confirming budget adjustments approved in the budget year up for the second reading. An ordinance confirming budget adjustments approved in the budget year of 2011. Uh, move to suspend the rules and place the ordinance on third and final reading. Second. Roll call, please. Alderman Halpern. Aye. Alderman Brown. Aye. Alderman Easterling. Aye. Alderman Stamp. Aye. Alderman Walker. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Brown. Aye. Alderman May. An ordinance confirming, confirming budget adjustments approved in the budget year 2011. Move for adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that the ordinance confirming budget adjustments approved in the budget year 2011 be approved. Floor is open for questions. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 8-0. We have an ordinance amending part 28 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas to add a new Article 5 con concerning pretreatment of discharges into the wastewater system up for the first reading. Is that number two, Ms. O? You forgot number two. No, it is not number two. <laughs> <laughs> it's number three. Uh, excuse me, please. Let me go back to number two. Number two. In order to close 100 feet of Warmack Street line immediately west of Moreland Street up for the second reading. In order to close 100 feet of Warmack Street lying immediately west of Moreland Street. Move to suspend, suspend the rules and place the ordinance on third and final reading. Uh, roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, second. Aye. I'm a Brown. Aye. I'm an Easterling. Aye. I'm a Staff. Aye. Alderman Walker. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Brown. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Because it, I got a question because y'all haven't seen this area. And then, and, and, ah, we'll move, we'll move it on forward. Then we go to the discussion. Okay. An ordinance to close 100 feet of Warmack Street lying immediately west of Moreland Street. Okay. Spin the rules and place the ordinance on third and final reading. Roll call, please. Oh, that was already there. Okay, we'll move for, <laughs> I'm lost. Move for adoption. Second. It's been moved and probably seconded that the ordinance to close 100 feet of Bullmack Street, lying immediately west of Moreland Street. All right, floor's open for discussion now, sir. Do you have anybody to, to uh, kind of discuss this, explain it? Because it's in the middle of some woods and the drainage is already there. Mr. Stepps. Well, he called me and I went out there and looked at it. I don't see no reason why it can't be closed because right now it's not affecting any anybody, it's not affecting anybody in the neighborhood. That's, that's it's it's not a it's not a street. That's what you're saying. It's not a. It's right in the woods, all right? Miss, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's Miss Miss Hill can explain it because right. I okay. called she, her. Right. Yes, Miss Hill. The street that's being referenced in this closing is only platted on paper. It's never been developed. I checked with all utility companies, including the street department. It will not be developed. As a matter of fact, part of the right of way that we're talking about, uh, there's a building that sits on it, and that's the reason why the property owner has asked that it be closed so she can own the property that her building sits on. All right, thank you, ma'am. Or just a little stub that comes off Moreland? Is that is just a little Miss Hill? Yeah. Just a little stub. Yeah. It's just a little stub that comes off Moreland. Is that all it is? It's a little section of road that's Yeah, it's, it's there's an access to the building that's there off of Moreland, but the street's not there. It's just it's just platted. Oh okay. it's it's platted on your map and it looks like it's there, but it's actually not there. It's never been developed. Never I just asked us, it's in the heart of the fourth ward. I know a lot of y'all don't go over there like that. So I to let y'all know. All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? The motion carries 8-0. Okay, now we have an ordinance. Ms. Holcomb, I'd like to recommend you only read the title on this uh, book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, we're trying to get in trouble. We have an ordinance amending. Part 28 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 
to add a new Article 5 concerning pretreatment of discharges in the wastewater system up for the first reading. An ordinance amending Part 28 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas to add a new Article 5 concerning pretreatment of discharges into the wastewater system. Move to suspend the rules and place the ordinance on second reading. An ordinance amending part 28 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas to add a new Article 5 concerning pretreatment of discharges into the wastewater system. Move to further suspend the rules and place the ordinance on third and final reading. It's been moved and properly seconded that an ordinance amending part 28 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas to add a new Article 5 concerning pretreatment of discharges into the wastewater system. to evaluate the police department's policies, excuse me, the police department's management practices and policies. Second. It's been moved and probably seconded that a resolution requesting the mayor to investigate the retention of professional consultants to evaluate the police department's management practices and policies. Pull those open for discussion. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can I do? No, no question. All right, hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying no. Uh, I'm sorry? I, I do have a question. Okay. Um, oh, you just, we just investigated. Right, okay. All right. No, I don't have it. All right. All in favor of the motion? Let it, be demo, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? 7 1. Uh, well, I guess I should have brought up my uh, <laughs> question. <laughs> it was tied for question. Now, when you investigate this, uh, what's. What you, what will you be investigating? <laughs> I think it's stated all in the uh, right. yeah. in ordinance. I mean, in the resolution. So. But as I understand it, within 30 days, you're to bring for yeah. cost and benefit analysis for yeah. us of doing something like yeah, this. Just, We're not necessarily yeah. saying go do it. Right. Okay. This is the investigation. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Resolution. A resolution reappointing Joey Geringer to the Board Let's of Directors of yeah. Jefferson County okay. Port Authority. A resolution reappointing Joey Geringer to the Board of Directors of the Jefferson County Port Authority. Moved by It's been moved and probably second that a resolution reappointing Jerry Geringer to the Board of Directors of the Jefferson County Port Authority. Mr. Geringer uh, completed uh, a previous term. He's now coming up for his own original term. 
Secondly, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries 8-0. A resolution appointing Diane Tatum to the Board of Directors of the Jefferson County Port Authority. Moved by Dr. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that a resolution appointing Diane Tatum to the Board of Directors of the Jefferson County Port Authority. Floor is open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries 8-0. A resolution appointing Robert Luther to the Board of a resolution appointing Robert Luther to the Board of Directors of the Jefferson County Port Authority. Move for adoption. Second. It's probably second that Robert Luther. Luther. Luther, I'm sorry. Luther to the Board of Directors of the Jefferson County Port Authority. Close open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Okay. Uh, and the resolution declaring certain houses, buildings, and our structures as nuisances and A resolution declaring certain houses, buildings, and or structures as nuisances and ordering their abatement. Move for adoption. Second. Been moved and probably second, Mr. Steps. Uh, uh, Mayor, I'd like to amend that list. We have a list of uh, that you should have before you for the ones that have gotten permits and should be abated from there. Also, I was I want to get with Mitch here on one that uh, Mr. Uh, Kenny Carey had called me on, on uh, 3400 South Irish Street and then asked for 30 days. And I told him that I would, uh, I would recommend the 30 days. And Which one is that? Uh, 3400, uh, Mr. Kenny Carey. Seventeen on my list. Yeah. Thirty days, sir. They won't get to it. Okay. Within thirty days, so you know, as opposed to taking it off the list. Right. We'll just ask Miss Ruth that we extend that for thirty right. days. Right. I'll call. I'll call. I'll call you. Will he be able to come get the permit? Yes, Miss Ruth. Have a check with him, please. The gentleman, and, uh, in order that he can come get a permit. Yeah. Yes. You know, if he does get the permit and get started within 30 days, fine. Okay. That's that's all I have there. Okay. That's in form of motion. I'll second it. I'm sorry. I'll second his motion. He made a motion. Right. It's been sure. moved. It's probably second. This is the amendment. Yes, sir. That the amendment be approved. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the amendment as presented, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Okay, any, any, any uh, objections? Okay, no. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So. Move for the original as amended. Second. It's been moved and properly second that the original as amended be approved. Well, open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? The motion carries 8-0. Okay. 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 It's been moved and probably seconded that we adjourn this meeting. Thank each of you for attending.